So I think it's for, for real now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to our 36th episode of Apex Innocent Tabs. Coming to you live. And I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Coming to you live every Friday at 12.05 Eastern but Time. But this is our low budget. <laughs> <laughs> for five minutes only from Massachusetts, my name is Hayden. And I'm Anton. And is completely obvious, this is our low budget offering in the in some cinematic universe. We like to keep re repeating that so that nobody expects anything from us. Yes. Um, Expectation is low. Absolutely. Um, well, Hayden, um, I, I'm really excited about this week's tip because uh, you and I actually encountered uh, this scenario, both of us independently within the last week. Um, and I'm really excited with the solution that you came up with. And I think it's a definitely worthy tip. Um, the other thing I'll point out about it is I think we can actually do it in five minutes. <laughs> yes, so that, that is the challenge. Um, uh, yeah, I, and I'm also excited because the, uh, this comes from a place of genuine inspiration. And um, I, I think as a result, I, I think our viewers may find it extra compelling. Uh, so yes. let me go ahead and kick off this timer and waste yeah. one more. No, no cheating. Yeah. Yes. So as may be obvious already from this form, um, I have uh, two different tables. I have an emp table and a nickname table. Uh, they're separate tables. I, I could have put a nickname just an emp, but I decided not to, to give myself a challenge. Uh, well, and actually I'll say that this is a, a common data modeling scenario and people can argue with it and we can have those discussions later, but you often have two tables with a one-to-one -one relationship where the driving table has to have a record in order for the secondary table to have a record. But if the secondary table has a record, it's only one. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship where the second one might be null or have no record. And the uh, the final challenge I, I gave myself here is I wanted the whole thing to be controlled by a single set of buttons. So I didn't want to give the nickname form its own set of update, uh, create, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, I'll, I'll um, I put you on the spot, Anton. Uh, how would you imagine that I am uh, performing DML against the M table? Well, it's it's Apex. You might as well use an Apex form region with uh, the form initialization, the automatic DML, standard yeah. stuff. Precisely. So uh, three different things. I initialize the form. I have the form on the page itself. And then in the processes, I, I submit the form. So that right. is simple as pie. You can't do better than that. Right. The wizard just does it for you. Exactly. Right. Um, can you anticipate how the, um, I cannot do the same thing for the nickname form? That's right, because the, the button is tied to the database SQL action. So the button defines whether it's an insert and update. So in many cases, you're going to be doing up, update on the, the emp table, but uh, the employee table, but the, the nickname table will be an insert. So you can't do this as much. I'd, I'd like the Apex team to fix this because there should be a way to do this, but you can't. Right, yeah. So um, uh, when you create the form dynamic uh, uh, declaratively, you'll notice that each button will be associated with a database action. And in this particular instance that I chose, um, I would be performing an update against the emp record for Carlotta. And there is no associated record in the nickname table. So it, it, that would need to be an insert. So at performing a SQL update, there's a conflict there. So, right. Uh, so what you, is a um, solution? Yeah, so you can't just do it declaratively. Some people would just go in, they'd create a couple of processes, they'd do their insert, they'd do their update. But if you just do that, you're going to lose lost update protection, which is something that Apex gives you natively. And it, it declaratively, when, with the form, you get lost update protection. So what we really want is a way for us to still have lost update protection. Yes. And uh, while the, the solution is a little bit more work than just Turning up, than having a form or an Apex page, there is it is a, nonetheless a fairly declarative solution. So if I navigate back to Page Designer and I uh, look up here under SQL Workshop, there's an oft overlooked utility called Methods on Tables that allows me to build a PL SQL API on top of the table. So you can see I've done this before. I, I've already um, preceded this with my package name Methods on Tables, uh, created mm -hmm. and named. Um, and then here uh, again. The table uh, that you want to do your method on. The yeah. table that I want to do my method on. And uh, there, Abracadabra, it has created a package for me that um, uh, has a series of procedures. So here I have an insert procedure, uh, an update procedure, a delete procedure, a, get, a retrieval procedure, and uh, two different uh, retrieval procedures. One has the MD5 and one doesn't. And that MD5 and, is the key element. That's what's going to give us lost update right. protection. And, and here is the function that actually builds that MD5. Uh, uh, so um, I, I, I had to perform a few changes on this um, to get it ready for my purposes. Um, I'll just walk through this quickly. Um, I, uh, 
first and foremost, you'll notice that I did not include all the audit columns. So um, yeah. here I have these, here they're gone. Okay. So that was a simple change to make. And then secondly, I didn't want to unnecessarily um, perform updates against the uh, the nickname table every sing single time you submitted the, the uh, page. So I uh, check the MD5 of the values you're proposing to pass into the table, and I compare it with the MD5 of the record that already exists in the table. And if they're the same, I ignore the update. All right. Well, I think that there's at least a small chance that they could be the same, but we'll talk about that in the break. Okay. Oh. And so, so let me just uh, show what that looks like on the page. Yeah. So uh, here um, I'm initializing the form with this logic. Yeah, that's the getter. And I, uh, I have a, a page item called MB5 in which I retrieve the MB5 of the record at the time of retrieval. And then I submit that back to the database in my process here in which I um, pass back the MB5 for the update. Beautiful, beautiful, I love it. it seems to me like we've just uh, solved our uh, lost update problem and yeah. we've done it just in time. Just in time. So I will go ahead and stop this timer. All right, well, I, yeah, I anticipate that there will be people that haven't really thought about lost update protection and so forth. I think we'll talk a little bit about that um, in a minute. Um, and uh, and so I, I think that th this could drive some conversation, um, but we've got a wisdom of the week. I understand that there's an off-topic tip, um, but if you just came in for five minutes, ring the bell, send letters, tell all your friends, yeah. subscribe. I think we've got like 130,000 subscribers at this point. Um, we're just, we're killing it, Hayden. Yes. <laughs> I've quit my day job. This I do it full time. <laughs> All right. Well, this Wisdom of the Week, um, much like last week's Wisdom of the Week, is inspired by uh, a recent event and a, an individual person. Um, Hayden, as I understand it, has been having trouble with his mouse. And I wanted to point out to him that uh, USB does not stand for universal seat bows. So I understand <laughs> that, that, that the connector on his mouse has been, uh, has been uh, problematic. And I, and I just don't want to use it as a seat belt anymore. Yes. Um, I... Uh... I learned a thing or two about uh, mice this week, and um, uh, that uh, XKCD joke is right on point. <laughs> um, okay. Well, as I briefly uh, mentioned, uh, there is a chance that when you compare those two MD5s, that that the the same string could could compare, and and you could have made a change change there that yeah, doesn't get detected. So just to review what you're saying, Anton, yeah. um, the, I, I calculated the MB5 of the existing record in the table, and I calculated the MB5 of the, uh, of the values that I'm proposing to pass into the table, mm -hmm. and you're saying that there's some possibility that those MB5s will match, but in fact will represent different values. Yes, there is that chance. Um, and that chance, I did calculate it out. It is, uh, that chance is 1 in 1 1.5 times 10 to the 29th. Okay. I, I think I'm comfortable with those odds. That's, I believe that's more, it's greater than all of the numbers of uh, uh, atoms in the known universe. And also the number of subscribers that we have. <laughs> it's, it's slightly greater than the number of subscribers we have, yes. So, um, yes, yeah, so I, I think that the chances of that happening, <laughs> um, Neil, version number column, sure, you can use a version number column, but the MD5 is one in 1 1.5 times 10 to the 29th. Uh, quite high. Um, version number column also actually uh, uh, doesn't necessarily work. I mean, it, it depends on, there's all kinds of things here, right? But the version number column could get updated, but in fact, there were no, it's updated to what you're changing it from. So you could actually be changing it from something else. So there are pluses and minuses to all of these techniques, um, but some sort of lost update protection in my mind is critical. Um, <laughs> yes, and so perhaps um, for our viewers who may be um, uh, skeptical, uh, could you make a case for why lost update protection is so critical? Uh, well, certainly, um, and I wish that I had prepped a, a specific example, but th the idea is this. You and I both look up the same record. Yes. Um, and we're both looking at it. With Apex, there's no um, op pessimistic locking. It's optimistic. So it if I make a change, and mm -hmm. so let's say I change the nickname to um, Triple H, and you go in and you make a change, you're going to um, overwrite my change without knowing that it was already changed. Now, right. 
In the case of the nickname, maybe it's not a big deal, but with most of your data, you care. You want to know that that data has changed before you go changing it to something else. Um, and right. in, in the case that, um, that I worked on recently, it was, um, it was related to the names of um, vendors. And if you, it, it names and social security numbers of vendors, mm. or not social, but uh, employee identification numbers of vendors. And if it could have happened that you updated the name to match the, the, employee identification number while the other person updated the employee identification number to match the name. There was a mismatch. Two people were updating the same record. One updated it one way, the other updated it the other way. And in the end, it becomes swapped. Right. Um, so, yes. And, and of course it goes without saying that if you were to build the uh, form using the Apex declarative uh, utility, that would be a built-in feature. You, um, it already takes care of uh, lost update protection. And right. in the event of someone having rec edited the record after um, uh, you retrieved it uh, and you try to submit the form, you get an error uh, telling you to refresh the form and try again. Yes, exactly. Um, and there's, there's all kinds of nuances to all of these things that I could go pretty deep into. But like, for example, with, with Apex, Apex is only doing lost update protection on the items that you actually have. So if, if your table has 30 items on the, on the page and you only select five of them, it does lost update protection against those five. So if mm -hmm. any of those five have changed, but if other things have changed, you apparently don't care about them. But if you did care about them, you could put them on your page as hidden items. There's you know, all kinds of, like I said, things you could do here, but sure. suffice it to say, it's important to consider lost update protection. So I'm convinced. All right. Um, well, it looks like we've had a couple of comments. They're mostly um, people making fun of me, I think. But uh, <laughs> but um, that said, uh, Hayden, I know we also have an off-topic tip. So why don't we hit that? Uh, yes, we do. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen again. <clears throat> and... Uh, I always um, am glad for the opportunity to show off the capabilities that my Mac represents. Um, uh, my, uh, and uh, let's say I have a photo, um, and I, I took this a screenshot of myself, um, and let's say I don't like the fact, and I want to submit this as a profile picture, and I don't like um, that it says scheduled up here, and I don't like that it says my name down here, and I don't like that there's this little um, uh, horizontal uh, ellipsis on the side there. So. Uh, obviously, if I'm some sort of Adobe Photoshop whiz and I'm subscribed, I could easily take care of that. Uh, Mac also has a capability that comes native with the platform. If I go to share, add to photos, and I come here to uh, photos, and I go to edit, and then uh, retouch, I can uh, go, uh, I can wipe out this Hayden there. Look wow. at that, magic. I can get rid of the schedule up there. Again, magic, and I can get rid of that. So and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in, and I'm, I'm sure that Mishka is going to ask, can you get it so that you're looking at the camera? Uh, <laughs> let's see what I can do there. <laughs> not, not an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but that's excellent. That's a great little tip. Um, I actually am always looking to very quickly without any effort retouch things like that so i yeah and adobe photoshop is very um is a big commitment um, yeah, yeah no criticism intended but it's uh it's not not everyone has it and if you have a mac why bother right right well and so i'm going to return we have one comment here that i think is interesting and that's which tappy code generator generates the safest optimistic logic collision detection detection mm -hmm. Well, I'll say the what you get from the Apex methods on tables is extremely safe. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous to even consider one in one point five over ten to the twenty ninth as a possibility, right? It's just it's just such an infinitesimal possibility that the database is more likely to have, or the operating system is going to have a, a bit switch on you more frequently than that. It's crazy. Right. Th that said. There, there are, there's a lot of nuance here, right? Um, this, the way this is generated, it's going to accept, it's going to expect you to pass in all of the columns that that that, that particular one includes. So, um, if the row has actually updated in the meantime, but those columns are the same, 
you're not going to have any lost update protection. But there was, I mean, you're not really updating it either. So it, you know, it's really what your ultimate goal is. I think for almost everything people do, that method on table is going to be certainly fine. Oh, Apex, um, I'm sorry, um, not Apex, uh, Oracle Designer took a different approach many years ago. It had you pass in all the old values and all the new values. Um, so that's another way that you could do it. You could just pass all them and can compare every single value. Um, and as Neelish mentioned, you could have a, uh, a row version number um, on the table that you check the, simply check the row version number. And if that's changed, you can assume that at least the row has been updated, even if nothing is different. So Hayden, any, any thoughts on anything else on that? I'm not in the habit of using the row version number, but I, but I welcome the suggestion from Neelish. Um, I will I'll look into it. Yeah, I mean, there's also a uh, row SCN. You could, mm. the row SCN is just the last the system change number. You can pull up the system change number from uh, the last time it was updated and you can check check the system change number from the most recent time. You don't need even another another column in the table, just uh, row SCN will, is sufficient. Um, yeah. And I suppose if you do row SCN, you want to make, you want to set your database to do the row SCN with each commit as opposed to every three seconds, which is I think another option, something like that, but right. it's all. Um, anyway, um, uh, so hash value of all the input params might also work. That's essentially what we're doing, I think, unless I'm misunderstanding it, but that's what I think, um, I think that's what the MD5 is, unless I misunderstand the comment. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I think that uh, covers it. We're into about 16 minutes, so nobody needs more than that. Yes. <laughs> but uh, please um, write us on Twitter with any uh, follow-up questions. And um, uh, already people have been addressing us on Twitter, and uh, the questions were asked may be fodder for a future. Time. Yeah, actually, there's at least one out there that uh, I was just working on. So uh, we'll see what we come up with. I look uh, forward to that. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Do all the things. Yeah,